lesson, I'll be covering how urine samples can be used in diagnostic tests with reference to use of monoclonal antibodies in pregnancy testing and testing for anabolic steroids and drugs. This is part of the excretion unit of the OCR A-Level Biology course A. Modern pregnancy tests rely on monoclonal antibodies. These are an effective and accurate way to get a result. Mono means one and clone means identical copy. Monoclonal antibodies are identical copies of one type of antibody. They are specific to certain antigens, in other words, foreign proteins, and can be made in the lab. So for a pregnancy test, a monoclonal antibody is made which has a specific receptor, the hormone HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin. So how are monoclonal antibodies made? First of all, an antigen, such as HCG, is injected into a mouse. The mouse naturally produces plasma B cells, which produce antibodies specific to the antigen. So here they will be specific to HCG. The mouse's spleen cells, which produce the B cells, are removed in the lab. The spleen cells are then fused with human tumour cells, called myeloma cells, to form hybridoma cells, which divide indefinitely. These hybridoma cells divide and produce millions of monoclonal antibodies specific to the HCG. These monoclonal antibodies can then be marked with a dye, usually with a blue dye, and then incorporated into the pregnancy test strip at the mobile antibody area. Further up the strip are other antibodies. In the test strip, there are more HCG antibodies, but these are not mobile. They are attached to the test area, so they cannot move. Then there are more monoclonal antibodies at the check strip. These monoclonal antibodies are again fixed in place and are monoclonal antibodies which are specific to the antibody for HCG. To start the pregnancy test, the pregnancy test stick is dipped into urine or it is urinated directly onto. The urine, which may contain HCG molecules, moves along the pregnancy test strip by capillary action. First to be reached by the urine is the mobile antibody strip. The antibodies in the strip are free to move and have blue beads attached. The shape of the binding sites on the antibody are specific to the HCG molecule. Any HCG molecules in the urine therefore bind to some of the mobile antibodies forming an HCG antibody complex. If there are no HCG molecules in the urine, no binding occurs in this area. The urine then continues to move along the pregnancy test stick, taking any HCG antibody complexes with it. It also carries the free moving blue marked antibodies which have not attached to HCG. Next the urine comes across the test strip. Here there are immobile HCG antibodies. They are fixed in place so cannot go anywhere. Any HCG antibody complexes formed in the mobile antibody area will bind to the immobile antibodies as their binding sites are also specific to the HCG molecules. This forms the well-known blue line, showing the lady is pregnant. If there were no HCG molecules in the urine, no HCG antibody complexes have been formed and there is no binding here. To make sure the test is working properly and that the mobile antibodies are being carried up the strip by urine, there is a final check strip. As the urine continues to move along the strip, it is only carrying the mobile antibodies that did not bind to HCG molecules. In the check strip, there are immobilized antibodies specific for the HCG antibody. When the mobile HCG antibodies reach the check strip, they bind to these immobilized antibodies, giving that strip a blue color also. This shows that the pregnancy test stick is actually working and therefore reduces false negatives. So that is pregnancy testing, but what about testing for drugs and anabolic steroids? Urine can also be used for these purposes. The main ways drugs are tested for are gas chromatography, mass spectrometry and immunoassays. Firstly, let's look at gas chromatography. This separates all of the components in a sample by injecting the sample into the machine and vaporising it in a gaseous solvent. Each substance dissolves differently in the gas and stays in the gas phase for a different length of time. This period is called the retention time and is unique and specific to each substance, helping to differentiate and identify each component. The different retention times are due to different chemical and physical characteristics of the molecules, causing them to travel through the separating column at different speeds. Each component of the sample is absorbed as it comes out of the gas phase 
and is analysed by a detector, which then provides an image or a chromatogram. The location of the peaks in the sample's chromatogram are compared with standard chromatograms of known substances in order to identify any drugs present. The size of the peaks is proportional to the quantity of the substance in the sample being analysed. In mass spectrometry, it identifies substances by electrically charging the sample molecules with an electron beam and accelerating ions and pass them through a magnetic field. This blows apart the molecules into charged fragments. The magnet deflects the ions as they pass through it, with the smallest ions being deflected the most. A spectral plot displays the mass of each fragment, which is unique to that substance and can be identified against plots for known substances. These fragment masses are used to determine the mass of the original molecule and hence its quantity. Immunoassays are another way that monoclonal antibodies are used. They are quick and accurate tests that can be carried out on the spot to detect specific molecules. The sample is mixed with a solution containing antibodies specific to the target substance. The antibodies in the test are usually labelled, either with a fluorescent dye or a radioactive substance. In this way, the amount of the target substance in the sample can be determined by measuring the level of fluorescence or radioactivity. So there we have it, how urine samples can be used in diagnostic tests, looking at the use of monoclonal antibodies in pregnancy testing and testing for anabolic steroids and drugs. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, why not click like and also subscribe to my channel where you'll find an ever-expanding set of videos on biology.